everybody, John Brewer here. I was writing the script for episode 3 of The Hunters, which is where we first really dig into the mechanics of the game and how to make choices. As I was writing, I realized that I had devoted most of the episode to explaining some of the fundamentals of how probability with dice works. So rather than weigh down that episode and to make something a bit more game independent, today I just want to talk about dice. Specifically, we'll be talking about the d6, or the little cubicle dice that you're probably all most familiar with. We're going to assume that our die are perfect cubes and they have an exactly even chance of coming up on any particular number. In reality, that's rarely true, but that's an episode for another day. Now, the simplest thing that we can do is just roll one die. That gives us a simple result. We have exactly equal chance of any particular number coming up. Now, often when we roll a die, we're trying to roll over or under a target number. If we look at our grid of results, we can graphically see how large our chance of succeeding or failing is. For instance, if we're trying to roll a 4 or greater, our chances of success are 50%, because half our possible results are 4 or greater. If we need to roll a 2 or lower, our chance of success is only one-third. Now, if we roll two dice, there are a total of 36 different ways that those dice can come up. The first die can be any number, one to six, and the second die can be any number, one to six. I tend to think graphically, so I'm going to represent these possibilities as a grid. I find looking at the grid of all possibilities is the easiest way to get an intuitive understanding of the odds. In most cases, we'll be adding the value of the individual dice together to get a result. This method is often referred to as pip counting, in reference to the small circular indentation, or pips, shown on the dice. With two dice, we can see that there are only 11 unique values that might come up, 2 to 12, but they aren't equally likely. There are 6 ways that 7 can come up, 3 ways that 4 can come up, and only one way each for 2 and 12 to come up. Again, we're often looking to roll above or below a given target number. With two dice, however, and unequal probabilities of any particular result coming up, the odds are a bit more complicated. For instance, if we need to roll a 7 or higher, 21 of the 36 possible results will give us a success, or about 58%. If we need a 3 or lower, however, we'd only have a 3 in 36 chance of success, or about 8%. In addition to just rolling the dice and counting the pips, many games add modifiers, or numbers we add or subtract from the die roll before we get our result. These modifiers are usually what the player can affect with their actions, so it's important to understand how they work. For example, if I'm making a roll with two dice and try to roll a 7 or higher, but I have a minus 1 modifier, then I lose 6 of the 21 successful results that I would normally have. Now my odds of success have fallen from 58 to only 42%, a 16 percentage point drop that means I'm less than 3 quarters as likely to succeed now. If I get a minus 1 modifier on my attempt to roll a 3 or lower, though, it actually doubles my chance of success from 8% to 17%. Finally for this episode, we're going to talk a bit about combining probabilities. In The Hunters, one of the most important choices we make is how many torpedoes to fire at a target. Say we want to know what the chances are of at least one torpedo hitting the target. If we need to roll an 8 on two dice to hit the target, we know that we have 15 chances in 36 of making a hit, or about 42%. If we fire two torpedoes, we can calculate the odds of both hitting by multiplying 0.42 by 0.42. Essentially, there's a 42% chance of the first one hitting, and then within that 42% chance, there's only a 42% chance of the second torpedo hitting. That comes out to only an 18% chance of two torpedoes rolling for eights, both striking the target. Likewise, we can calculate the odds of at least one torpedo hitting the target by taking that 42% chance of a hit and multiplying it by the chance of the first torpedo missing instead. That tells us that if we fire two torpedoes, we have a 66% chance of at least one of them hitting the target. Another way we could think about it is of calculating the odds of both torpedoes missing, and then subtracting that from 100% to find out the odds that they wouldn't both miss. If we do the math, we find that the odds of both torpedoes missing is about 34%, which is exactly the inverse of 66%. Until you get the hang of adding probabilities, it can be a little tricky to make sure you do it correctly. A little rule of thumb can really help in checking your work. If you only need to hit with one or two rolls, the more you make, the higher your chances of succeeding. If you need to hit with every roll you make, the more rolls you make, the lower your chances will be of succeeding. Make sure your probability calculation is going in the direction you expect it to be going, 
and you're probably not far off. I hope this brief primer has been both interesting and informative for at least some of my viewers. We'll be back next time when Captain Kramer employs some of this math against a British warship. Until then, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.